How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the You Know Adam Sane podcast, where you get to know a little bit more about people, passions, and all things business. Today, I'm hanging out with my co-founder of the Whiskey Grail, Mr. Jim Walker. Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam, for having me. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you. This one's going to be a little bit different because you are actually uh, someone that I work often with. Yes. Uh, but we are here to really talk a little bit about Whiskey Grail uh, and, you know, everything that that is. Yes. Um, Jim, what is it that you do? Wow. Uh, I do a little bit of everything. Uh, so I have about three different jobs that I hold uh, on a regular basis. I work as a, a plant automation engineer uh, for a company called Color Technologies out in Brooklyn. Uh, I work as a shop manager here at the Fab Lab. Um, that mostly entails uh, like trainings and special projects that they want to take on and do. Uh, so actually, there's a lot of overlap between those two positions. Um, and then my third job is as a entrepreneur and as a craftsman, um, of which Whiskey Grail is currently, you know, kind of the predominant thing. Um, Very cool. So, yeah. so for those that don't know, what is the Whiskey Grail? So the Whiskey Grail is a white oak charred whiskey tumbler. It's designed to mimic the environment of a bourbon barrel. And so that's going to kind of soothe the whiskey, make it smoother, better to drink, enhance the flavors, bring out kind of the smokiness and the oakiness as those notes hit your nose. Uh, so that's what the Whiskey Grail is. It's a phenomenal drinking experience. Yeah, I'm super excited to p talk about this because obviously like my experience and your experience from this has been different. Right. Um, so let's kind of like dive into that. You know, this product right now is being sold where? Uh, online, primarily. Uh, we do have a few resellers. Uh, we are working with Willie's Distillery uh, out of Montana, I believe. Uh, we're also working with uh, Cruise Customs out of Kentucky and uh, a guy by the name of Tom with Whiskey Wine and Design. He's here locally in Georgia. He goes to a lot of craft shows and stuff. Um, so, But our primary sales channel is through online source. That's very cool. Um you know, for you, how did the Whiskey Grail come to be? Originally, it was a kind of a byproduct of, of different things. I was making a whiskey box for my best friend's grandparents for their 50th anniversary. And uh, so it's this beautiful white oak box with walnut top and forged hardware. I'm a blacksmith as well. Mm. Uh, so everything was handmade, hand forged. And then when it came time to put you know, like cups in it because it's uh, it's designed to be a set for four, right? So you have your decanter and then four glasses. Uh, so when it came time to put cups in it, it didn't really feel right just to put something off the shelf into it. It just didn't, it didn't seem to fit with uh -huh. everything else being kind of handmade. Um, so I used some of the offcuts from making the actual white oak box to make the whiskey grails. Yes. And primarily I saw that as a way to turn what was, you know, small scrap wood basically mm -hmm. into really money to buy more wood. Understood. <laughs> you know, to, to be able to do more quote unquote real projects. Um, I never really saw it as something I would intentionally buy wood to cut down into small pieces to make. Mm -hmm. um, that was not really the original intent. Um, so I made about, I think 25 or so of those. Uh, and then sold through them fairly quickly uh -huh. um, just because I, I was making them. So I made a jig, some very crude jigs to run through table saws and whatnot uh, to make the original ones. Um, compared to now, uh, they're, they were very rudimentary. <laughs> I think that to be fair to say, there's been a lot of refinement that's gone into them since that time. Um, when you when you sold through them quick, you know, did you have any like was there any indication on your end like, hey, there might be something here, right? Because you don't right. always sell through things unless everything that you make is like immediately off the show, <laughs> right? What, well, what? there, I mean, so there is part of that. Um, a lot of what I make is, uh, or what? Well, I should say a lot of what I made because I really don't do commissioned work like that very often anymore. Um, so a lot of what I made, it was commissioned work. Um, and ultimately, you know, I already had a buyer mm -hmm. before I even made them. Yes. Uh, so I guess I, I wasn't really used to having a product that I just made and then hoped to sell. Sure. Um, and then again, there was kind of at that point in my woodworking career, there was not really the idea. The, the idea was like cutting wood down to smaller pieces is not 
it's, that's wrong, <laughs> right? Right, which of course is a ridiculous concept sure. from my perspective now. But at the time I was, you know, very much into, you know, you want to keep the wood as together as possible. Yeah. Um, as, as far as the projects allow. So I sold through them rather quickly and then I was like, dang, I'm out of scrap. I can't yeah. make any more of these. Yeah. Again, at the time I really was seeing this as a, as a way to remove to turn scrap material back into usable product. Um, so it was like, next time I make something out of white oak, I'll have some more for sale. And did you continue to do that? Like how, uh, did, how many, did you make multiple batches? Like, you know, what, what, where, where did the idea come from to uh, scorch the inside and, and all those different things? Yeah, well, I mean, so again, it's, it's really designed to mimic a barrel, yeah. a whiskey barrel. So it, it's uh, everything from kind of the octagon shape to the assembled, uh, really even, everything about it is really taking inspiration from barrel yeah uh really the only thing it's lacking is the steel bands and of course the other the other half right? sure 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 <laughs> right um and there's some nuances with the construction that is different right you know barrels are really tension fit as opposed to our grails which can't be because they're not they don't yeah. have hoops and sure, stuff, sure. Right? so there's some differences <clears throat> but everything was inspired by a barrel and so the char I mean, naturally makes sense to from from there, at least in my opinion. And, you know, did you test them out? Did you take them for a run? Like, you know, initially, did you drink whiskey out of it? Like, what were your thoughts? Uh, a little bit. So um, I'm, I was never really a huge whiskey guy, which yeah. is kind of ironic, uh, considering what we're currently doing. Sure. Um, but I did a little bit and they it was much better from the grail. Uh, again, I'm not. Did really... you compare between the two between a glass and. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Because uh, I kept a few, of yeah. course. I think I've got about four of the original ones that I still have. Um, and then uh, I really, I think the litmus test for me was actually uh, Poppy, who is the grandfather. Um, because he's a, he was a big whiskey guy. Sure, you know that was his thing. <laughs> that was one of his things. Yeah, yeah. you know they've got a, po a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle, yeah, right? So, absolutely. Um, and they were gracious enough to allow us to take some pictures with that. Yeah, so, that was really cool. But that I don't know how much people know about Pappy Van Winkle that are listening to Please, the show. Tell but, us. Tell you know us. that's kind of the holy grail of whiskey. Yeah. You know, so to have somebody who's partaken in that. Sure. Say that our or that, you know, those grails that I was making at the time were good and he preferred those to glass was awesome. a really big, you know, like green light for, for me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so after you made that, you know, um, the product itself lay dormant for a while. It did. Yeah. So ultimately what happened was um, I didn't really make things with white oak for a little while. Okay. You know, just the projects that I had were different. Um, I did a lot of cabinetry. I did a lot of, um, you know, just odds and ends. I did eventually do, um, during COVID times, uh, I did a bunch of uh, white oak, what were they, um, like uh, acrylic stands, like mm -hmm. dividers, like big full like four by six foot dividers right? yeah so like full person dividers um so i did have some white oak left over from those and i think some of those were, we actually did cut down to make some of the early whiskey grill mm -hmm. prototypes because that's when but it's pretty close to the time when you walked into the shop and was like what's this yeah, yeah. Well, so. how, how much how much time was like that passed between the time that you had kind of like created the initial about product two years two years wow so, yeah. so it laid kind of like just in the shop yeah in random yeah. different bins for that long um you know people would go to your home and you had these you know wooden cups and something interesting that was happening was that they would always like go towards the wooden cups <laughs> out of out, out of, of everything. all the glassware yeah, that you had to drink anything. I mean, you know, they'd be they. Yeah, sometimes we'd have drinks or, or mint juleps out of them or whatever. But you know, a lot of times they'd just be coming over to hang out and they just grab a, you know one of these. Uh, I don't even know what to call them because they weren't whiskey grails at the time. I mean, it, it is. It was. You know, it was pre whiskey grails. Pre whiskey I guess. grails. Yeah. Some of these pre production whiskey grails, and they would just drink you know Dr Pepper out of them. Yeah. Or whatever. You know? Yeah. Uh, so that I thought was kind of funny, but they preferred it. Um, and I think a lot of that had to do um 
you know, it's just something that's kind of natural. It, yeah. it feels it's nice. unique. It's, it's unique. super unique. Yeah. It's super unique. It feels nice. It's wood. It's warm. Again, even with <laughs> drinking Dr. Pepper, right? I don't know yeah. if you can really get tasting notes for Dr. Pepper. <laughs> but I think there is, you know, a little bit more warmth to it. Like the glass, it, it's not glass, so it's not cold. It's, yeah. it's kind of self-insulating. Um, so I think it's 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 a very unique product. Um, yeah. And I think people gravitated towards it because it's pretty as well. So then, you know, two years pass uh, from the time that you created the product. You, I, I guess you've, you know, continued to cut down this white oak and you've placed it into bins. We we actually meet through uh, something that FabLab put together, which mm-hmm. was, um, what was uh, it called? Big Cafe. Big Cafe. Yeah. Uh, this was during COVID time. And we actually did it at the restaurant. Right. Um, and, you know, we, we all kind of like got up, got up in front of the, uh, the camera at that time because everything was virtual and we spoke and we spoke our piece and then something kind of like stood out to me about you, uh, in terms of like your ability to woodwork. And, you know, the thing that I needed at that moment in time was someone to help me with kind of like the stickiness of my tables. Yeah. And, you know, from there, I, I guess like we developed a, a really, um, you know, good friendship, right? Like we, we would kind of like, you were teaching me, uh, CAD, solid works. Yeah, yeah, solid yeah, works. Yeah. And I was learning how to, you know, kind of like make things on the computer. Yeah, you're, uh, you're doing a lot of jewelry still at that time. Yeah, I was. And I, I thought that was like, you know, super, I, I love learning, right? Like, yeah. you know, if there's one thing I do. Um, but what was your experience from like, you know, that day when we uh, were in the shop, right? Like, I, I remember kind of like just bumbling around, like, you know, I'm always asking, you know, what you got? Like, you know, <laughs> what, what, what you got? What's like, got what, going on? What, you, what, what other things do you have? Yeah. I was just, and I don't really, I, I didn't know like what specifically I was looking for. Um, but I, I, I just remember that moment where you pull out this, this bin and it has all these like wooden slats in it. And um, you 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 held up a cup and you said, uh, and this is for drinking bourbon. And I remember that exact moment because I caught chills up and down my spine. Um, it's funny because like just the week before, I I, jo- I joined a uh, a bourbon club. Right. And uh, for those, I'm sure there's like thousands, if not you know hundreds of thousands of these out there. But it's just a group of guys that get together and we sit, like sit around and we and we taste different bourbons and we get tasting notes and we talk about the bourbon uh, and we it's kind of like this fellowship type feel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it was curious that that lined up and, the, <laughs> and, and I remembered that moment in time. I was like, okay, I, I need to take this to the bourbon group and yeah. have them experience it. Right, right, right. Uh, so I just like, I remember like taking, you know, as many as I could hold. I think, I, I think I actually, cause all the ones that I'd had, I would have had at the shop would have been. Um, duds duds or rejects okay. for okay. one reason or another so i think i actually gave you some of the ones that i had at home okay to take with you to the bourbon club got you got you um but yeah i mean same thing right so um yeah sometimes the universal you know aligns right? yeah it's so crazy <laughs> and, and I, I remember you know in my mind i i basically took all of these grails and i brought them to the club um and i and i didn't say anything i was just right. like hey hey try this and you know, I, I try to just market research, right? Right. Like, that's the way I look yeah, at it. You want an unbiased take. Exactly. On give this thing. give me your opinion. And and the interesting part of it is I actually didn't care if it was better or worse. The only thing that I cared about that it was different than drinking out of a glass. Right. And every single person, sure enough, was like, Yeah, this is definitely different. Like, and that was the only thing I was looking for. And, you know, from that moment on, and I, I think like very close to that period of time, I just started like talking at you and, and <laughs> like, you know, laying down. I, I, I honestly, I think I, I didn't stop talking for literally like, I don't know, it's probably one or two days that I was just like, all right, this is how you market this. This is how you do this. And I, I just kept going at it. Um, you know, and for you, like, w- like from your viewpoint, like what? Was what I was doing like? Were you like, oh my god, like what is this guy like? Who right, is this guy? right, right. Well, I mean, so I think at that point we had developed a, a bit of a working relationship, mm-hmm. right? Because I was doing a lot of the refinishing for those tables, and I think we had gotten to a pretty good cadence with that. Um, and uh, so I don't think it was so much like, oh, Adam's just constantly barraging me with information. <laughs> Uh, because I, I think in, at some point I did recognize the potential for this product because I did sell through them pretty quickly. Yeah. You know? Like I just threw them out on Facebook. I was like, hey, I've got like 15 of these. Yep. 
whoever wants one, you know, come get them while I've got them, basically. Yeah. And I did go through them like really pretty quickly. Um, so I think I knew that the potential was there. Mm -hmm. um, I just never thought to turn it into a consistent thing. Mm -hmm. So I think I was on board pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, it just, I, <laughs> I knew the challenge we were going to be looking at from a production side. Sure. Uh, to get it moving. And you were very much like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Typical. You know, pretty typical. Standard Adam Sang Classic behavior. Classic Sang. Yeah. Uh, which is not a bad thing. Sure. You know, but it's just, you know, that with all, and I did have a lot of other projects going on at that point, and I've worked through most of those. Sure, <laughs> sure. At this point. Um, but, you know, so there was a lot going on, um, and then also uh, this new thing, right, that we were starting to build together. Um but I was excited. I mean, I was pretty much on board from the jump. Yeah. Uh, I was excited. It's super cool. So, you know, with that said, uh, we kind of like built everything out. I think we launched maybe, was it February? It was January like or a February? couple months later. So we, that was like Thanksgiving 2000, <laughs> was it 2020? It must have been. It must have been. It was in the middle of COVID, I remember. Right. Yeah. So it must have been, yeah, it must have been Thanksgiving 2020. And then, um, yeah, like... I'm pretty sure we were making and selling them in like maybe early January, mm -hmm. mid January, uh, in smaller numbers. Cause we, I know we had staff at that point. Do we? I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure we had. I think maybe Alex and Rose Alex at that time. Maybe, yeah, or Danielle. Mm -hmm. Cause I think Rose came later. But anyway, you know, so we had some people who started helping us out like pretty quickly. Yeah. So like, you know, in, 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 in that kind of like transition period, like we launched, uh, we kind of like, so when did the name come in? Do you remember when the name came in? We, I know we sat down and figured that out. Uh, we started just kind of pitching things back and forth, uh, and doing a little bit of, um, I'm just kind of feeling it out. What I would give to get like a list of the names we that came we came. Away. I don't know if we kept them because uh, I'm pretty sure we sat down one night in the conference room and we just kind of like fired them back and forth. And we had like four or five, and then Whiskey Grail came up. And I don't remember even who threw that out there. Mm -hmm. It may have been a little bit of both, mm -hmm. um, or like taking different things that we'd already come up with and kind of smashing them together until we found something that we both liked. Yeah. And then we kind of threw that out to other people and say, what do you think of this? And then that's the one that stuck. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a great name. I think absolutely. from a brand perspective, I think it, you know, hits on, you know, the Holy Grail, mm -hmm. uh, which is a nice feature. And then, you know, the Whiskey Grail has, you, you get immediately, you know, cup, but it's yeah. not called a cup. Right. right? Like, right. I, I think that that's one of the things that we were trying to avoid. Exactly. Um, but that, that, that's great. Um, so, you know, when we first launched, uh, I remember there was a a bunch of orders that came in and, and, you know, like, obviously I have the tech side and kind of like, you know, putting the website together, we got like a lot of that fleshed out. Um, and, you know, initially there was this huge support just from your side of things of yeah. people that you knew that wanted to kind of like purchase the grail. And we got that initial order out. Yeah. Um, and we just continued to produce, uh, I think, especially in the early kind of months, it was a lot of me, you know, reaching out to influencers, getting them right. into the hands of influencers and hoping that they would create content, you know, from it. And and they did. Um, it was just, I, and we had this strategy. I remember telling you about this. It was, you know, we would take kind of like, you know, these whiskey brands. And w when I say whiskey brands, like just like these um, influencers, if you will, like if they have a mark, I would take their mark and then put it like engrave it onto the grail as yeah. just like a, a bonus and send it out to them. And in my mind, it was like, well, you know, if you're drinking whiskey and it has your brand on it, they're going to like it. They're, they're probably <laughs> not going to dislike it. Right. right? Like this exactly. has my brand on it. Like, exactly. you know, you can't hate um, it. Right. But I think overall people were very pleased with the product. And I, I, and I think that worked for a period of time. And, and we started investing a lot of our efforts into Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Um, and it didn't really kind of, we, we saw sales like here and there, um, right. but it wasn't anything substantial and it didn't really change until what point? 
I think we really, it's kind of funny, right? So I think uh, we actually have Hunter to blame for a lot of this. Really? I think so. So uh, one of the other people who works here in the space, his name is Hunter. He runs a company called Burrow Wood. They uh, make circles. They make <laughs> circles, right? So he, he's a great guy, but um, he makes Adam mad a lot, which is <laughs> always fun to walk into. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he's just young. Honestly, Hunter, I'm, I'm sure you're watching. Uh, you know, I, I really, I, I think I've said this to you before. I think he's just, he has an ex experience. Right. Um, but he has a great, you know, entrepreneurial mind. It's just, it goes in a million directions at once. <laughs> and I just got to like smack him, like, you know, a few times, like to get, to just keep him in line, keep, right? Yeah, there's just keep there's gotta be someone to do it, narrow. you know? That's really um, funny. But but, uh, but anyway, so Hunter has been, uh, you know, telling us you got to do TikTok. You got to do TikTok. Guys, why don't you have a TikTok for like months at this point? Yeah. Right? And so we finally do a TikTok. Uh, I think we'd done like one. We threw out a TikTok like once and then we kind of left it alone for a while. Because at that point, I think you were starting to get Pepper running. Yep. And so now, then when Pepper got a little bit more mature as a company so that it could actually kind of do more things than mm -hmm. just like, because I, what I understand, I don't really know anything about social media. Please, please, please. What I understand is like Instagram, social media, Facebook and Instagram have kind of been like the standard. Like if you do these two things, your small business will make sales mm -hmm. for a long time. I think that's been the case yep. from what I understand. That has been changing yep. as Facebook and Instagram move and like really the, the umbrella company, right? Meta yep. or whatever has been moving much more to a pay to win system. Yep. Uh, so really the smaller businesses, uh, which would naturally, in my opinion, naturally benefit uh, greatly and would benefit the users of Facebook and Instagram because they're kind of tuning into these niches are really pushed out by larger companies that can buy ad space. Sure. Right, because like with our budget, I don't know how much we want to get into detail, but sure. our advertising budget is very small. Sure. You know, like it's just the reality of where we currently are at Correct. as a company. Yeah. We can't buy out ad spaces on Facebook and Instagram and sure. stuff. We just, it's just not in the books. Mm -hmm. So TikTok has a much more favorable algorithm to Instagram and Facebook that allows small businesses to really see a lot of bang for really not much sure. uh, input in terms of monetary input. Absolutely. Right? Uh, now there's obviously like the production and the cost of making whatever it is you're gonna put onto TikTok. Um, but I mean, right now with like an iPhone, like- You, you know, can do you, it. You can do it. Absolutely. Like, it's never been a, a better time to you know jump into that scene than right. now. The only thing holding you back is you. But but please Absolutely. continue. Yeah. So so to get there, right? It's like we don't really have. I don't think we have to pay anything to TikTok to you know throw our content out there and have it seen by thousands, hundreds of thousands. You know, we've yep. got one or two videos that have really popped off. Yep. You know, and we didn't have to pay a dime yep. for that. Yeah. You know, and that's the way that TikTok is. And that same video, I don't even know if we posted on Instagram or Facebook. We did. We did. I mean, how many views did it get on? I mean, you Facebook know, that Instagram? video that we're talking about is this uh, video that got 340,000 views on uh, TikTok. And it was the first really moment that I realized how much potential TikTok has. Exactly. You know, uh, up until this point, uh, we must have been running the organization for probably six to eight months now. Uh, we're we're I throwing than that. I think really. I think so. A year? Because I I think it was not. It really wasn't until like January, February of this year that we started doing TikTok stuff. Must have been. Well, maybe my my timings are like off, nah, anyway. but it's okay. So you know, in in here, you know, we had been pouring money into Instagram, pouring money into TikTok and, and the Facebook. pictures, oh, sorry, sorry, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. And, and we were really like, you know, the quality, the quality of content was good because at that point we had, you know, Pepper, the PR company, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, Kate's amazing at, you know, getting quality photos out there and the brand was, was tight, but it wasn't converting. Um, and yeah. You were right. We we kind of like dumped a few videos on TikTok, and you know some of them got a decent amount of views. We did maybe, um, you know, three hundred, four hundred views. But the moment that that TikTok video just kind of like caught the algorithm, and it made the algorithm happy, and it pushed it into people's faces, we started seeing a ton of sales. Ma and we it, sold out. Yes, we sold through. We had a lot of product built up yep. at that point. We had like three hundred grails in inventory or something like that. And we blasted through that. Yep. 
um, you know, to the point where <laughs> people were getting mad. Yeah, like the, the, like, no, the staff was like, "Adam, you can't, you can't do this to it." Yeah, and like, I was like, "Guys, on, guys, I, guys, I, come on!" My responsibility is to sell. Okay, exactly. I, I can't, I yeah. can't, I don't, I'm not supposed to. Anyways, yeah. um, but but it, it showed me so the the potential of what TikTok can do. Absolutely. Um, and I think what was interesting about kind of like that entire kind of like experience is that you know as a product in this day and age you have to have some sort of presence where it's getting the word out Absolutely. to your consumer. Absolutely. R regardless of what it is. Because, I mean, I think that, you know, not to knock uh, Facebook or Instagram, because those platforms, if you know how to use them, they still work. Right. Right? Right. Um, but just the response from TikTok was crazy. Yeah. Um, and even right now, you know, as we mo look forward and, you know, look at the other aspects of, you know, the organization, um, opportunities are just coming faster and faster, which is phenomenal. Excellent. It's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. It's great. Absolutely. Um, for you, kind of like what is in your mind uh, next for the, the organization, the company, Whiskey Grill? Yeah. So I, mean, I think it's really, uh, I'm really kind of in charge of the production side of things. So that's kind of my viewpoint on this. Uh, really, I think from a production standpoint, it's uh, uh, some light automate, well, depends on how you define light, but some partial automation of our production process that'll really allow us to speed up our production, increase our volume, uh, decrease our labor cost per grail, uh, and also get people off the table saws, Yeah, right? So that's like a big concern of mine because I, I know what table saws can do to your fingers. I've, yeah. I've got I've got all 10 fingers, but- Good job. Uh, thank you. Uh, but I, I know woodworkers who don't, you know, I know a lot of woodworkers who don't have all 10 fingers from one machine or another, you know. So as soon as we can get people to use the table saws less in our production line, uh, that is something I'm very interested in. Um, so that's kind of the first step for us is is um, kind of automation. Uh, we're also looking at uh, a couple new products, right? Yep. So we've got uh, whiskey, or excuse me, grail butter. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> grail, What's, what is grail butter? Grail butter is a uh, paste wax, which is a combination of beeswax and mineral oil that is designed to uh, maintain the long-term kind of uh, health of the grail, mm -hmm. right? So because our grails are made of wood, uh, which is a natural material that absorbs moisture and dis uh, releases moisture and shrinks and grows and changes and whatnot as the humidity changes and as you drink from it and whatnot, um, over time, the waxes and oils that we've put into the grail okay. will come out of the grail. Got you. Um, sometimes more quickly, sometimes more slowly. It just depends on how much you wash it and whether or not you leave it in water and how much you drink from it and all kinds of things. But in order to maintain the finish, in order to maintain uh, the look of the grail, the feel of the grail, this grail butter is going to help moisturize the wood, keep it supple in mm -hmm. effect if wood it doesn't we don't really think of wood as being supple but but it can be dry you know sure. and, and so and that is the opposite so to keep it smooth and nice and pretty yeah grail butter is gonna be a huge help for this for that That's awesome what other products are, are coming up yeah so we're also getting uh whiskey flights mm -hmm. so this is a concept we've had actually in your restaurant for a long time yep. now uh, almost since the beginning, I think. Very early on. And so basically these are going to be uh, either walnut or cedar uh, little side-by-sides with like, so two uh, little, just a little platform for two cups. One is a whiskey grail, one is a rocks glass. And the idea is we're going to put the, the experience in front of you. So you can decide for yourself whether or not you like it out of a glass or out of grail. And you can see the difference side by side uh, right there, right then. I, I actually encourage people um, that are out there that are listening. Uh, if you have experienced the whiskey grill, if you have whiskey grill at home, the best, in my opinion, way to get the true experience is to have them side by side. Absolutely. Because... You know, your palate uh, is to a certain extent, you're, you're, you're testing it. You're trying to yeah. see like, you know, how refined are my taste buds yes. in order to pick out the nuances if I'm drinking out of a whiskey grill versus drinking out of a glass. Right. Um, and that um, whiskey flight is going to be what does it for 
a majority of people is like that is going to be a product that's yeah it up. puts it together it packages it in a convenient way for the consumer uh we have shirts on the way we have shirts on the way i'm really excited about that i know the production staff is actually really excited about are they? that they are yeah they want awesome. them they want them uh we might do hats that'd be kind of fun yeah stickers stickers yeah all kinds of merch stuff yeah. Uh, we're also looking at like char sticks. Mm. Uh, we're looking at um, like uh, spoons, like a bar spoon, uh -huh. potentially. Uh, we've looked at ice cream, excuse me, not ice cream, ice cube molds. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, like we, a custom mold. Custom mold. Be because like the ice is like also a huge component Absolutely. of drinking whiskey. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at some kind of like prismatic Yes. Octagonal. Yes. Just perfect for perfect the Perfect for the for the whiskey grail ice cube. Um, so we're looking at kind of how what what's the best way to uh, produce those block molds? Because there's also uh, that's just a whole nother rabbit hole. Sure. <laughs> sure <laughs> right. Sure, sure. The design of silicone block molds <laughs> for making ice is actually extremely complicated. Yeah. Um, and we want to do a one piece mold because we don't want it to be that complicated sure, sure. And easier to use easier to use easier to make um and whether or not we're going to do that in-house or we're going to outsource that and how do we there's a lot going on let's there. talk about some specific experiences for okay. you what has been the biggest challenge to overcome with the company i think um it's still something that we're we're overcoming you mm -hmm. know i think it is uh, ultimately what will define the failure of success of the production side mm is going to be driving our times per grail down yeah right so our production time down we have to yeah um because that's that impacts our pricing that impacts our wholesales um you know that just has such a huge that i mean that's foundational sure right so i think that's the challenge yeah at least from a production side of things is how do we speed it up and how do we make it more efficient yeah uh, so that we're wasting less time, we're wasting less material. How do we turn everything we can into productive time or labor or material? You know, what was super cool about kind of like seeing your growth during all of this was, you know, before uh, when you used to work, you were doing everything just... <laughs> solo right Mr. yeah solo like yeah you know this guy would just show up to to the job site just by himself with his like you know single two blocks and take it like handle everything which yeah. is great which is definitely a way um but kind of like putting together the team yeah that and, has been awesome yeah yeah putting together the team not only just for whiskey grail but now i have people i can rely on for other projects absolutely you know so like the last handful of tables that we've refinished for you I haven't actually really touched very much. Gotcha, gotcha. Which has been which has been fantastic. Um, like the menus that we did for you, I really didn't touch at all. Yeah. Past the prototypes. Yeah. Um, the doors that we did for you, those are, you know, I did those with Nathan. Sure. But sure. Nathan did a lot of their labor. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's been great. You know, even in other with other people, other projects, you know, like Garrett with Rolling Monkey, mm -hmm. I've got Nathan running stuff for him now too. So it's been great where um it frees up my time to really do the things that we need to push the business forward yeah. in a more sustainable way. I don't know if you remember this conversation, but we actually had it uh, very early on because I think, you know, you were kind of like seeing what I was doing, like with my organizations and my companies. And yeah. you were asking me like, well, how, how do you do that? How do you get to that point? And I remember very early on, it's like, you know, having something where you have a team and then figuring out like, you know, that brings you stability, right? Yeah. That's your base. And then from there, you always have like, you know, you're pouring into your team members. And from there, they're able to to add value to whatever next you have going on. Absolutely. Um, and it's something that I've deployed with my organizations and it's great to see that happening also with this one, right? Yeah, it's phenomenal. Um, I think for me, uh, one, one of the challenges, the, the biggest challenge that I think that we kind of like got through uh, was that moment that that TikTok like popped off. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest, like, you know, at that point, uh, we were, you know, close to maybe nothing in the bank. Um, you know, we were actually pull I was pulling staff to, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I was having clean, them clean, clean the floors like, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go scrub the deck, you know, yeah, or whatever that, it was. That's true. That was right at that. That was like mid-February of this year. And um, um, that was like the biggest challenge. But when that, when it popped off, it just literally 
reverse the game Absolutely. and did some. And yeah. then I was just like, wow. Well, like, yeah, because I think that was a really interesting lesson, as w- at least uh, for me as well, was because we, we had converted all of our capital into product. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yes, we have like 300 grails in stock, but we can't use those to pay our employees. That's right. Um, and so it was it was it's such an interesting thing because you have to have the, the product. Yeah. Because and again, like we sold through that in like two or three weeks. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, dang, I wish we'd been producing. Yeah. But we, you know, that's OK. You know, it's the way she goes. Um, but it's, it's that balance. You have to find that balance of, um, you know, we're selling enough to keep the production moving and we're making enough to hit those spikes. Mm-hmm. And I think that is something that we've been able to do more coming out of that experience. Yeah. Um, you know, for you, what has been your biggest uh, takeaway from this entire Whiskey Grill experience? Oh, man. You know, maybe like building the team has been huge. I think like building out the product has been huge and, and like all the processes, mm-hmm. right? Because like I had everything in my head of like, okay, these are the steps I got to take to make a whiskey grail. Yep. But, and, and also like making everything so much more legit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right? I, I don't even know if I still have the original jigs that I was using to make these things. Sure. But like I was using a pencil, <laughs> like the eraser of a pencil to hold the piece as it was going through the table saw. Which is super sketchy and like not, <laughs> you know, like that's just not really a not sustainable thing. Like that, that is how you lose fingers, yes. right? You know, um, but because I was only doing like 15, 20 of them, I didn't really, it was like, whatever. Yeah. This is not. Just be careful. Be careful. Yeah. You'll be okay. But once you hand it off to somebody who has, you know, realistically like zero experience with woodworking, yeah, it has to be so much more structured. Yeah. So I guess kind of the, 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 one of the really big takeaways, and I've been able to apply this to the other projects like the menus and yeah. like everything else, is just taking all that data that's in your brain and then just throwing it onto a paper. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you can communicate that to anybody and say, this is the steps you need to take in order to make this product. Yeah. Um, building out the process. Building up the, yeah, building out the processes, I think, has been a huge takeaway. That's super cool. Um, both with Whiskey Grail and the other projects we've done. Yeah. How do people get in touch with Whiskey Grail? What's the best way? Uh, find us on social media or email us. Uh, we've got jim at whiskeygrail.com and we've got adam at whiskeygrail.com. Yeah. On every single social media, uh, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, we're just at Whiskey Grail with the E. With an E. With the E. Indeed. Uh, and then, um, yeah, www.whiskeygrail.com. And that's where you get your grails. Yeah. Cool. Cheers, man. Fantastic. Thanks for coming on to the show. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for having me.